Gaming guys, and welcome to episode 25 of Global Contenders, the review series for Gran Turismo's touring car lineup. Both real vehicles and fictional ones are featured here, and this is another fictional touring car. There may well be real world touring cars based on this particular vehicle, but this car in particular is not a real car. Now, it's based on the EK Civic. A very, very popular JDM car to say the least, a huge fan following, and a highly capable hot hatch as well. Especially given that it doesn't really have the same kind of power as many of the higher level hot hatches, or hot hatches which you'd typically expect to be as quick as this car is. Now as far as the touring car goes, in some ways it is actually the same as the road version. Even visually, it's not that much different. There are some very slight visual changes, and the majority of the visual changes are on the interior, rather than the exterior. But apart from that, it's a relative sleeper as far as touring cars go. Now, of course, you cannot remove the racing number, which is kind of unfortunate, because you could make it into even more of a sleeper. But it's... A vehicle which could potentially be an improvement over the existing road version, but at the same time when you start to see that the specs are so similar, that could begin to be worrying. For one primary reason, this is a 110 grand car. The normal Civic is nowhere near that, and the value for money on the normal Civic is very good. So is this car really justified in costing 110 grand? That's the question. Well, for 110 grand, you get the 1.6 VTEC engine, it's front-wheel drive, as you'd probably assume, and, as I said, it does put out some of the same numbers as the road version. The power, for instance, of 389 horsepower is the same as the road car. You're looking at 222 foot-pounds of torque, and the PP1 fully tuned isn't really that much different to the road car. 520 is reasonable. You can understand why it's at that level, and one of the reasons is due to the fact that the power to weight ratio is pretty good. The horsepower and the weight that you're given to work with make the car naturally the kind of vehicle that would have a slightly higher PP. Now speaking of weight, this is lighter than the road car, and that's one of the biggest improvements between the two. It weighs in at 845 kilos, and that means you're looking at 460 horsepower per tonne, which is pretty good especially for a lower level touring car and one which doesn't have as much power to work with as many of the others in this series. It is in fact one of the least powerful touring cars in the game. So the question is how good is it and is it worth buying? Well, as far as how good it is, it's based on an EK Civic Type R, so it's never going to be bad. In fact, it's a very good car in the exact ways that you'd expect it to be. Grip, control, drivability, handling, brakes, they're all very good. And the disadvantages are, again, the same that you'd expect them to be, straight line power. It just doesn't have the straight line performance, especially top end, to match really most of the other touring cars in the game. So can it make up for that in ways such as the smaller race cars do, like your Suzuki Cappuccino race car. It doesn't have the sheer power, but due to its super compact size and low weight, you can keep your average speed pretty high. In fact, it can rival much more powerful vehicles in that regard because it's just so quick through corners. This vehicle could potentially have that advantage, and to some degree, it does. It does have very good high-speed flow, it's a very easy car to drive. The fact that it is front-wheel drive means that it's much more difficult to lose control. For instance, if you clip the grass or a curb, the front-wheel drive will, generally speaking, bring the car back in line relatively easily, whereas with a rear-wheel drive car, you'd be more inclined to lose control and spin out or just crash into the wall. Now, as far as its value for money, that's where it takes a bit of a hit because this isn't a bad car in any way, but it is really expensive. 110 grand is a bit steep, to say the least. This vehicle would be much better if it had a price of, say, 40 or 50,000. 
because that's the kind of price that it's actually worth, especially when you can get vehicles such as the Mazda Atenza or the Toyota Altezza touring cars for significantly less. 50 grand, 75 grand, etc. So, as far as whether or not I'd recommend buying this car, honestly, I kind of can't recommend it. Not because it's bad, but because it's just not really purposeful enough. It doesn't offer enough of an improvement over the road version to justify such a steep price. Now, at the same time, I wouldn't recommend not buying it. This isn't a vehicle for the boat series where I'd specifically say just avoid these cars. This isn't a vehicle like that. If you want to buy it, I wouldn't try to dissuade you, but there's just no reason to buy it. So I wouldn't say don't, I wouldn't say do. It's just a vehicle that does exist, and you have to make your own choice about that. It's not a bad car, but it's not a particularly great one for the money either. It's just one of those touring cars, or race cars in general really, that just falls into kind of a limbo, a no man's land, because it's neither here or there. But overall that's it for this particular review, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.